Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the On a Time on Target, a morning of brief. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about Snap that is up 25% pre-market already, kind of crazy, and has been on fire. They turned a profit for the first time ever, so that's kind of nice. We're going to also run through the other social media stocks, and are these names you should be invested in long-term, or should you not be invested in these names long-term? Uh, those are the tickers we're going to talk about in the lower portion of the screen there. Our day trading scorecard, we were up last week. We're down so far. One R this week. We're going to fix that Today, there's a couple uh, multiple longs to choose from. There's a couple shorts out there. They're setting up nice. But overall, the market's sitting pretty flat, so we'll see. All right. You can join us uh, live if you want for 25 bucks a month. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back again, everyone, this morning for today, Wednesday, October 21st, where we invest with fighter pilot of precision. All right, standard disclaimer applies there. This is a financial uh, education presentation, so do your own due diligence before you act on anything that you see here. All right, make sure you have your chat window open and ready. Make sure you have your Q&A open as well. I put a few things in the chat already to, that we're going to take a look at. Uh, today. If we have time, we are maybe another couple of uh, names, but there's a lot in motion this morning. So overall market's flat, but there's a ton of stuff and emotion in the middle of the uh, earnings season that we've got here. All right, mission objectives for today, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. Specifically, we're talking about growing our money through social media stocks. Uh, Snapchat beat earnings last night. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so their uh, profitability, profitable for the first time, they were up a penny per share versus uh, being expected a five cent loss per share. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, Snapchat has traditionally just been a money loser. And, uh, well, you know, there's Kramer was talking earlier about a cult following, getting people on Snap early in life. I think they've successfully done that and then worrying about how to monetize it later. So gutsy call, we shall see. All right, we'll look at some other social media names. The tickers are down here a little bit lower. For question today, I'll show you how to use Investopedia. We do have a couple of young folks on the line and one more that's uh, joining. I don't know if that's who the, the name I don't recognize is, but um, remember if you're uh, young and doing your own research, Investopedia is a great place to start. I will show you how to use that as well. All right, for the flow, it'll be long, short, open, short, long. We're going to do a market review. We'll do headline review, talk about stimulus, talk about some earnings that are out there. Here's our uh, individual tickers we're going to talk about, including SOCL, which is the index fund for that. Reviewing our scorecard, we already talked about, and then we will execute the open and go through the question of the day. If you have any contingencies, again, reach out to Steve at ototnow.com. Let's go ahead and take a look at TD Ameritrade Think Pipes. Think pipes. Uh, platform. What you're seeing here is the one-year S&P 500 um, sort of um, chart here. And yesterday, you know, we started with a nice big up move, but it eventually sold off here uh, and ended up a little bit in the red. So overall, again, where are we? It's been important to think about this going into the election. Uh, we've got two weeks, and there's a quote this morning that I came across that's kind of amazing that I have to uh, read it. It's and it talks about what do you do going into the the two weeks prior. I fielded a lot of phone calls yesterday. Folks are kind of wanting to to make a make a bet on the election and to reposition their portfolios now. And what I said to every single one of them was, uh, I think that's premature and a little bit on the greedy side. Um, we have been patient. 
for literally uh, back here in August, I was talking about de-risking, moving into fixed income. Yes, we missed out on a little bit of upside. I will tell you who cares compared to the big downside potential that we, we had and still have. Um, so to get long here is optimistic. I don't care who you think is going to win. I still think uh, volatility brings us down to at least 320 and probably into that 300 to 320 range. So don't get too excited just because we're, we're almost there, right? We still have to sit on our hands for basically two weeks uh, before we get super greedy, unless it's an individual name. You know, we can, we can uh, cherry pick something if we, if we see it out there. But the quote I came across was all of man's problems stem from man's inability to sit in a room alone, which is kind of funny. Uh, anyway, I, I tend to, you know, you hear things like that. I think warfare first, you know, with the military background, but it's also kind of funny from a, uh, you know, that's what we're doing in a pandemic is sitting in a room alone for a large part. Uh, I often get excited to leave the house to go get the mail at around you know, noon or one o'clock every day. Pretty big deal. Sometimes I leave the house again to go watch volleyball like I did last night. That's kind of the extent of me leaving the house. Uh, so uh, what that has done from a market perspective is all that money that is normally put into travel is now being put on buying stuff. That's why Amazon, eBay, all those names are up. The retail, or, you know, Targets, Walmarts, all that stuff has benefited from this. So what do you need to do going into the election is You've been very disciplined. You've been very patient. Well, kids, don't get excited. Uh, we got to wait it out. Do we know what's going to happen? The media says one thing. The media said the same thing in 2016. We don't know what's going to happen until they count the votes. And of course, the ugly scenario is they count the votes and they're still, there's no clear winner, right? Uh, so we shall see. But that's enough for the overall market. When you look specifically, this was our day yesterday, had that, hey, we're going to get some stimulus. Let's rock higher. Hey, everything is good. Then we got the, mm, you know, they're saying the same thing. It's only two weeks. Why don't we wait for the election to pass some stimulus? And I'm like, to me, I chuckle and say, if you think we hate each other now, <laughs> Wait till two weeks from now when all the people that said they were going to move out of the country, if somebody got reelected, don't, right? And then we're mad at them because they said they were going to. But we'll see. Um, so pretty big sell-off yesterday, retraced almost the entire day, um, ended up in the green from where we were on Monday's close, but red on the day uh, from after the gap up. And today, a little bit of up momentum going into the market. However, pretty much as we take a look at the headlines, we'll see there's not, the, the hope is kind of fading for stimulus out there. So, so we shall see. All right. Uh, earnings we already talked about. And actually, we didn't talk about. So earnings this morning. Let's go ahead and there's our chart that we'll come back to for day trading. Let's share out CNBC and we'll talk about some of the earnings that are going on this morning. So there we go. Uh, we had Snap, we already talked about profitable for the first time. Everybody's excited about that. Uh, we had Verizon also have a beat. We had uh, AN, which is AutoNation, had a good beat. And the, probably the biggest news story of the morning is Netflix uh, is selling off down 5%. No, we're not going to short it. Um, it's just too strong. But they had an interesting call where they've had a d decrease in number of subscribers. I'm not worried long term about Netflix. So we aren't even going to really talk too much about it. All right. Let's take a look at the headlines and across the world. So here, let's refresh this. So pretty well flat across the board uh, is what we've seen over in Europe in the red. So we're holding up there pretty strong, actually being flat uh, when Europe is pretty much red across the board there. Uh, over in Asia, not too big a move anywhere. Here's our numbers from yesterday, including volatility increasing. Again, we know that going to the election. If you hold VXX, just hold it and wait, you'll get paid. And if you don't, well, we'll sell it after the election. Uh, bonds increasing up now. Remember we talked a while ago, a few months we were talking about if we could only get to 0.7%, we're up at 0.8%. I would say north of one would be considered even somewhat normal, but interest rates are going to be lower longer. You know that refi everything that's an asset like a house and pay off debt that's not an asset, which is like car and credit card loans, you know, basics of finance 101, but money is going to be still be pretty cheap for literally a decade. So lots of uh, opportunity there. Uh, oil still hanging out above 40, even though it sold off a little bit yesterday. Uh, gold and silver go, creeping up higher going into the election. That's kind of expected. All right, let's talk about some headlines. Talk about net, Netflix shares fall after the earnings miss. That'll be temporary. Not too worried about that. 
mortgage demand, it was so high that it was falling now. I'm not worried about that either uh, because it was so high. I mean, everybody's refining. I talk to people every day about that. Okay. Unlikely to go through, says Goldman. Well, everybody's got an opinion, right? You've heard that phrase. I don't know. I'm starting to think that Trump is going to ratchet up. Here's how I think he'll play it. He will, if there's no deal, uh, which even may be behind the scenes, he's saying, hey, let's make sure we don't have a deal. Um, he'll ratchet up the rhetoric so hard that he's going to make the Democrats look silly if they don't do a deal pre-election. So that's how I think it's going to play out in the next three days. Um, we'll see. There's Reed Hastings talking about the Netflix miss. He's not really worried about it either. This is real. Symptoms of depression for kids growing up in a depression, or excuse me, in a pandemic. Um, if this continues on into next year, you know, that's, this is, this is real. Uh, we talked about that in our own households. So talk about that with your kids and just see how they're doing. This is not normal. You and I are adults. We can adjust to things. Who cares, right? Uh, I mean, most people can. Sometimes it's a big deal. Otherwise, uh, these kids don't know any different. So this is, keep an eye on them. Ooh, I didn't have to come back and check this out. 360 mile an hour car. That's kind of a recipe for a, a disaster, if you will. I'm trying to find the $113,000 truck, uh, the Hummer EV. There we go. Hey, there's Martha McSally. I served with her. Um, <laughs> Pretty interesting individual, not somebody I would choose to hang out with. I was talking to her one evening over in the Middle East, and uh, in the middle of a sentence, she just walked away and went to go talk to some general officer. And a, a comment a friend of mine said is the most dangerous place, and she was in 06 at the time. I think I was like in 04 or something. But um, it said the most dangerous place is between Martha McSally and the nearest general. Uh, you don't get in between, you'll get trampled. But anyway, um, she's obviously in a Senate battle there. Good for her, I guess. All right, here's what I want to talk about, $113,000 for a Hummer EV. So now, you know, I'm okay with spending some money on some cars, so I'm not the one to really say here, but this is kind of ridiculous, but that's my two cents. All right, there's the world's fastest car, a picture of it. I'm coming back to that later when I have a little more time to enjoy the article. All right, let's talk about Snap and our social media stocks. We're going to go to FinViz again. This is the snap chart. And again, we're going to talk about how to use Investopedia later. But for the younger folks that are on the line, uh, FinViz is also your friend. You'll get the chart, which duh, you can pull the chart from anywhere. Um, but what this doesn't encapsulate is snaps up 25% pre-market. So it's actually up here closer to 35. Um, I wouldn't touch it here. Not at all. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, when you get down here into the numbers, like, oh, yeah, it's all about math, right? The only reason the stock's running up is because they're profitable, which means they might have a price per earning, you know, PE ratio. Um, everything else is just, you know, I mean, it's been running up. That's not always good, right? You'd rather have it cheaper than more expensive. 7% short float. I bet that goes to over 10% today as people hop in this thing short. I'm not really going to short a social media name. <laughs> you know, shorting a cult stock like Tesla, uh, I'd rather find some better shorts like AMC or Hertz or fun things like that that are clearly going in the toilet. Um, but we'll see. When you compare this really with a chart, though, of an established name, now Snap's been around forever, and their point is, in the CEO uh, is like, hey, we're hooking kids on this to monetize it later. And I, I kind of believe that um, kids communicate in Snap, not just use it. You know, I communicate in Facebook using Messenger too. So I guess it's the same thing. But let's look at Facebook from a valuation perspective. First of all, much better entry point because it's sold off. There was profit taking back here. But look, these are actually somewhat normal PE ratios, right? Somewhat normal short float of a percent. Uh, they are, I got a text this morning from a buddy. You know, the, uh, it's just too funny. It's, he said, so now they make one one thousandth of the profit of Facebook. Cool, bro. Um, so kind of a funny comment coming in uh, this morning. So Facebook, I think, is a much better um, investment, if you will, than Snap. But if you like Snap and you're young, and you, especially if you're a user, that sounds weird to say you're a user. But this is something that if you're literally out there and you're uh, in your teens, Dude, buy five shares of this stupid thing if you got the money. Uh, throw it in your portfolio and you'll probably be happy when you're my age right? 
these things have a lot of long-term power. So don't get too fancy with your entry point of Snap or uh, Facebook. Just get, get some and uh, get paid over a lifetime. It's uh, kind of how, how you should do that. Okay, we're gonna go to Schwab real quick and take a look at some names. I didn't type these in, so we'll type them in uh, real quick. So there's Snap that we talked about in the upper left. We're gonna, here's Facebook's chart here. The next name we're gonna talk about is, where is my sheet? Oh, it's in my background. There we go. Twitter, uh, same sort of thing. Get people hooked. I've been on Twitter. I do find it hilarious. I'm not sure it's useful for business. And it's kind of more of a celebrity thing, if you will. If you want to like hear what Trump or Elon Musk has to say, like when they say it, uh, it's, it's pretty cool for that. But I don't know if you can really monetize it sort of thing. So um, Twitter, I would not be a fan of. I did actually buy Snap over Twitter. Mm. Never thought I'd say that. Uh, Pinterest, again, I don't use this. Think uh, soccer moms, if you will, but it's up 8% this morning. Uh, so same sort of thing. People that are on Pinterest all the time for creative ideas, uh, they're certainly getting um, uh, making some money off of that. And you can monetize Pinterest a little bit easier. MTCH is match.com. It's kind of a conglomerate of all the online dating stuff. And, uh, you know, well out of that phase, but I really couldn't imagine what it would be like to date in a pandemic anyway. And then, you know, this is that online everything, you know, this has been going on for decades now. So I can tell you it's normalized uh, for sure, um, but not where I would put my money personally. And the last one is the index fund SOCL. So uh, if you're interested, those are some things. I think Facebook, again, is by far your best. All right, switching to our day trading uh, putting our day trading hats on the uh, some funny stuff rolling in here. Let's look at NKLA long. Uh, there's a ton of longs out there this morning. So it is gapping up basically on the uh, partnership with GM and favorable comments from an executive out of GM. So we're going to take a look at this long. They were kind of left for dead after the, some, some negative stuff. So that's going to be our number one long. We're going to put it in there. I have several other names to cycle through that we'll take a look at if we need to. Putting that on our uh, chart up to the upper left. For a short, CSRP is the first, CRSP is the first name we're going to take a look at. These Both of our shorts today are um, pharma names. So they move and yeah, they can move against you too, but you also get paid. CRISPR Therapeutics, you can see down here, uh, falls on reports, patient death, that's bad, right? Uh, 106 down to 92, so a nice big gap down with lots more room to fall. Price, you know, around a dollar stop, so you gotta get ready for it. All right, so that's CRSP, and the last one we'll take a look at is APTX. App Tinks, maybe it's got the volume, it's got the gap down. This is a lower price point. So if you're really more comfortable getting down here and getting into a couple thousand shares, if you will, this one might be a little tougher to get a hold of when we go to short, but uh, down, you know, four, uh, 430 basically down to four and it's got room to drop. So all kinds of negative uh, comments out, out here. So we will go ahead and get set up for that on TD Ameritrade and I will get my own personal setup, stuff set up. So I've been able to take trades in addition. All right, you're looking at TD Ameritrade. We've got NKLA on the left. We've got CRSP in the middle. And we have APTX on the right. When I think stops for Nikola, I'm thinking a 25 cent stop. So it'll have to drop uh, 75 cents or so. Excuse me, go long, 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 long for Nikola on the left there. Uh, go up 75%, 75 cents. I've got think that's good to go. For CRSP, again, we're looking at a $1 stop to move $3. Again, that's short. And then APTX, we're looking at probably 10 cents or less. I would say more of a seven cent stop. Uh, if we can get it, maybe five if it sets up perfectly. Uh, but again, CRSP, if you're going short, that's my, you know, they have a death on their hands, so they got a deal. Uh, with that this morning. All right, so uh, 20 seconds to the open, on time, on target, welcome to the play of the day. We got the spy on the left-hand screen, left middle is Nicola, that's long, uh, and then the right middle is CRSP, we're going short in that, and then short on APTX. Both CRSP and APTX are pharma names that have had bad news, and we will 
uh, try to take a day trade short off of that. Uh, market's basically even, so we could kind of go either way on the market. So really, I'm kind of watching the market first to get a feel of whether I want to hop into one of these shorts or do I want to go uh, long. But I'm going to get the ticker set up for either. So as we watch them open here. So again, Nicola, I do like that it's selling off somewhat uh, and we'll try to catch it going back higher. And so selling off a lot there, 2250. Yep. Okay, we're going to leave Nicola for dead uh, after that kind of move and switch to another long name. Uh, PINS was Pinterest. We already talked about that. So they're up 8%. So we'll see how that kind of sets up. I'm starting to switch more to the CRSP. It's got lots of volume coming in. And you know, I like to short anyway. So getting my ticker set up here for a short. In uh, CRSP, so ideally we'd wanna see it to continue to go higher. And then when it flips to go lower, it's already moved a couple on the day. So I'm looking at an entry point of around this 92, 60 and again it'd be a dollar so 93.60 that's yeah up at 11 percent trying to get this with a dollar stop that's going to be tough i do think all this is just short covering so it's going to be a trade that we want when it comes back down uh, it's going to be a $2 stop. Oh, I hate that, but, um, get ready at, we'll go 93.20. 93.20 gives us a buck 50 stop. Making a little note there as I look down for a second. So 93.20 is when we're going to be in. Again, CRSP short, CRSP therapeutics, sell short. It's going higher, so we might be able to adjust this a little higher. Overall markets in the, in the red there, so that's good for shorts. Pinterest on fire. Can't touch that Pinterest name either now because it's gone up too much. But I do like this short. Boy, this is short covering like you read about, but all right, when this turns back down, so if you think if it's a $2 stop, it's going to be below the low of the day, which I like. Let's get into this at 95 short. It's going to be here pretty quick. It's going to be a dollar stop. This is pretty aggressive there. 95 is in. We're taking short and do a dollar stop. So we're taking the, the high of the day is going to hold is the theory here. Come on. So this is short. And again, 96 is our stop out. So make sure you get that in. Uh, if it hits that, we're down an R and we're out. All right. So hanging out there at the even, I'll draw here in a second once I get everything set up on my side. SP, get my stops in. So if it flips on me, I'll be able to get out. All right, so here we are. We can go back to drawing. We are in this trade. I like the way it's setting up. Can't draw this morning for some reason. And know what is even up with that. But it's not going to happen, so I guess I should quit trying. 94 is our first R. We got 93 is our second R. And 92 as our third R. So there's your full chart uh, that's going to be drawn for you.
let go. There we go. All right, so we got into this around the 95 point. Some entries were better than others. Again, if it goes above the high of the day up here to 96, we are out and it could, so get ready. Um, and then uh, of course we want it to roll over. So when you look at the overall uh, chart that we've had, let's get rid of the picture of me. Um, look at the overall chart that we've had. Uh, we've had short covering all the way up from 91, all the way up to uh, 95 or so. And did this chart just quit? I'm backing it up on another chart over here. No? Okay, CRSP, CRSP. So I've got it on another chart. We can monitor the uh, the price. This looked weird for a second. Looks like it had frozen. It is indeed not. So we are okay. All right. So you have that short covering all the way up to the uh, kind of the double top there at ninety five ninety. When you take it, you could wait for the chart to go down all the way down here and clear this congestion. Uh, but then, of course, your R math now takes you down below ninety as far as getting paid. So this is where you want to be as far as uh, the entry point. Uh, again, it's pretty aggressive. So if it holds here, I'm very okay with it, but we ha will have to see. All right, get ready. Looks like it might flip out on us. And if it does, then we are out. It held and now it didn't. All right, and it jumped out pretty bad. So we're gonna have a pretty uh, a bad exit on the uh, point there, but you gotta be out of the name. So it trades busted down a one R. All right, so let's look at some other stuff that's out there. So we'll give ourselves the big red X of shame because this did not work. And that's why you're out is it can just continue to truck higher. All right, APTX kind of worked, not a whole lot of movement. Uh, if you got in for a nickel, that might have worked. Let's look at some other names out there. LKNCY. See if Luckin's around $5 or so. What is wrong with that chart? LKNCY. Starting to believe things are dying on me here. All right, this says down 1.62%. Let's go to a different chart. We'll take a look about what's up and down. All right, so what have we got going up here? A couple things up 11%, uh, EPWCF. We got Twitter up eight, Nicola up five, CGC up five, marijuana names, a couple of them there, Northwest Bio been on fire. Facebook up, that's kind of sympathetic with, uh, with Snap there. So that looks good. Uh, Hillion's the old shell, so pretty pretty good names in the, in the green here. NASDAQ's up 0.35, Dow's a little bit in the red, S&P's a little bit in the green. And let's see, on the red side, we have got Netflix on the way down. Got Workhorse in the red, Kohl's, Raytheon. Uh, Raytheon's is just basically a buy. You can It's been beaten up so bad, you can buy it here. All right, so pretty much uh, equal across the board as far as our red and green names. Okay, let's talk about our last, I uh, don't see any Q&A showing up. So last chance, uh, denied APT sh uh, TX short. Yeah, that sucks. That, sometimes when you do get below the, uh, the $5, that is where it can be a, an issue there, um, their burner, so. It's kind of tough if you uh, if you want to. So let's talk about that. So if you're going to short and you don't know if it's actually going to they're going to have it or not, you can buy like 10 shares or 20 shares or 100 or, you know, if you're going to especially down at this point, you can buy 100 shares, for what, $400. So you can hop into a trade to see if they have it early um, and then go from there. Um, so. Anyhow, something to uh, consider. All right. Nine minutes into the day. There are luck and chart finally populated. Um, hanging out below uh, $5. Busted out of our trade. Again, you gotta be out of it here since it went above 96. And APTX couldn't get into because they did not have it available. So, all right, let's switch over to, uh, bring myself back up here and we're going to share out Investopedia.
Okay, so here's the Investopedia main page. Um, when you look at <clears throat> you just investopedia.com, when I search things like how to short stocks, it'll be like Investopedia, how to short stocks. And that will take you to the stuff that we normally look at uh, on, a, on a daily basis to, to get smarter, right? But if you go to their main page, they have a lot of very basic tools uh, that you can use. You have your standard headlines above, but when you get down here to, um, you know, you can take courses at the Investopedia Academy. So think of it as like a cons academy uh, for beginning uh, investors. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, sorry, Bernard, got sidetracked by your chat comment. I do think there was some delays or froze, freezing going on in uh, think pipes there. So kind of, uh, kind, kind of painful. Um, but yeah, the same issue I was having here. So if anybody's using the TDA platform, I think it was having a challenge this morning, if you will. But back to Investopedia here. Um, all right, so you can have on the courses. I'm not gonna necessarily go into those, but this is a good place for you to serve for things like how to short stocks or how to value stocks or what's a dividend payout, uh, that sort of thing. If you want to get into, we talked about paper trading, um, or paper investing, if you will, they do have a, they'll give you $100,000 of, you know, monopoly money, if you will, to go in and kind of cut your teeth on how to invest, that, that sort of thing. So um, pretty good tools out there, if you will. And then, of course, if you like videos, you can simply click on these. They're all pretty short uh, videos. And then it's got like, we have a question of the day. It's got a term of the day, right? So uh, you know, payroll tax is part of like I'm an employer now. So uh, payroll tax, tax employers withhold from employee salary and pays on behalf. So that's, uh, and you know, Trump suspending that for the end of the year, that sort of thing. So a uh, pretty good place to start, uh, if you will. Here's some more terms off to the right. So, all right. So out of our trade, uh, sorry, it didn't work today, down 2R for the week. So I got to double up and get on my game tomorrow to get back in the green for the week. With that, to recap, the market is in the red across the board now. So NASDAQ's up uh, 50%, S&P 30%, and Dow is in the green as well. With that, I will let you guys go, and we will see you back in tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by.